quick peek on a new system for this. Right here, this top group of nodes is the main ring. Everything's based off of that. And then everything after that, if you added, add more layers onto there, you would just add copy, do a copy and paste of new uh, node groups through here. If you wanted to add something new, like the last block, last layer on here is the white ones. Let's say we wanted to add pins afterwards. Click, shift duplicate, we'll drop this over to there. Base size, base size, base geometry, pop it out, and now we got pins. All right, here we go. I'm gonna make this thing from scratch. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is set up a couple of materials. Some simple ones. A couple of different colors. All that one green. I'll do a red. <coughs> no, we just spell that right. Red. Blue and I'll do one more. We'll go with pink. Okay. Now we're going to take this cube right here, turn it into a set of geometry nodes. <coughs> Clicking on the geometry node tab up top. Zoom in a bit. <coughs> And I'm gonna go look straight down at it. Call this a hood. Hood dash. Call it loop. O1. We'll disconnect. Oh. I'm gonna hold the control button down, right click, swipe over, create a line to get rid of that. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is make the inner ring, and it's, that's gonna consist of two circle curves. So, where do we go? We want a curve primitives, circle curve, and there's one. Shift D, duplicate it. <coughs> there's two. We're gonna bring this out. I'm just left clicking, holding, dragging out, and we're gonna merge the two, join the two, excuse me. Join the geometry, join the geometry there. After they're joined, we're going to fill them. Right, fill the curve. After this, we are going to set the material. Hit the material, and then after that, we'll just go out. So there we go on that. <clears throat> as far as the material goes, we're just gonna pick one. We're gonna go with blue for the inside. And there we go, there's our blue. All right, now is what we gotta do is be able to control these. This first circle that we uh, made here, that's gonna be the outer ring. So we wanna set the diameter on that. Bring it over here, I'm hitting, oops. Hit an end to bring up the menu on the right. We'll go down to group. Click on the radius. And we'll say OD. Outer diameter radius. And now if we move this in and out. We have an outer diameter radius. But we notice the thickness on this changes based on where we're moving the slider to. <coughs> so. Next we gotta do is the thickness of it. We're gonna create another input here. Call it thickness. And from this, is what we're gonna do is a little bit of math here. I right, have one math node. And we're going to have a second math node. <coughs> First math node, we're going to use some multiplication. The second math node, we're going to use some subtraction. And is what we got is we want to take, uh, 
what we want to do is we want to take the main outside diameter here multiply that by the thickness whatever result we get from that we want to subtract it from the outside diameter <coughs> and we want to connect this to the radius here and now it's at zero so it's a full circle and as we bring it up we can control how thick we have it by this inside one and notice the thickness of the ring will stay consistent now so that's our first groups of setups here I'm going to slide this all out and I'm going to take all of these do an alt oh. control J just to create a frame on there we can label the frame inner main ring set a color to it <clears throat> and that is that so that's our first one done now after this we're going to do a whole bunch of copy and pasting uh, we are going to move this out some I'm going to add another inner or another join geometry ring so we can start joining up everything else after this I'll drop that down to there Oh, and we have one other thing to do here. We can start adding controls to this, uh, which I forgot all about here. Uh, I'm going to add a transfer node. <coughs> transfer, transfer. Transform, excuse me, node right here. We want to control Oh, out. the location of it if by chance we want to animate the location of it so we'll just drag this over to there location in case we want to do rotate or animate the rotation of it somehow we'll bring this over to there and if you want to have it to scale in and out for some reason we're going to bring the scale over there and the final node for it is going to be the material so we can change the material on the fly <coughs> we can change the scaling of it if you want to change something like that oh. and that is that and we will save it First section is done and we need to add one more thing into this an extrude node forgot about that one extrude mesh we'll drop that in between before the transform we'll pull the offset over here relabel the offset extrude and just for organization I'm gonna bring that up I put it just under the uh, thickness so now we can see we can control the thickness if we want okay that should be all set okay next we're going to start setting up the little fins that'll be going around the outside riding around the outside OD here and pretty much from here on out would be based everything's gonna be based on node groups uh, so what we'll do is oh oh one thing I forgot to add before if we look we don't have a smooth circle is jump up the radius or the uh, resolution here only I use like 75 100 whatever will work uh, higher the resolution the more uh, vertices you'll have in your geometry that would be up to you 75 seems to work well for me though all right so for the next section with the no group is we're gonna create another circle 
I'm gonna click on the circle, hit Control G, and turn that circle into a note group. There's our output. Control right click and get rid of that. So we got it by itself here. I do the same thing there. And I'm actually gonna set up all the inputs first. So I'm gonna jump stuff around here. Later on you'll see why. Uh, excuse me, this top section right here, we're gonna keep it as a float. And I'm gonna name it, name it base radius. And I'll go base size. Base size. The second one, we're going to turn this into geometry. We're going to call this base geometry. Even though it's not spelled right. Uh, after that, we'll go with a material block. A little later, you're going to see that uh, I do a little backtracking here and I made a mistake. This should not be set to texture. It should be set to material. Made a mistake with that one talked about later. After that we'll go with extrude. After that we're gonna go with account. And we're gonna make that an integer. And we're going to go with outside. Uh, OD size. And that's going to be a float also. Float. We're going to go with inside. ID, inside diameter. Then we're going to go with a length. And what else we got to go with here? Uh, we're go with a rotation offset, which is going to be a vertex group. After that, I do rotation after that, and we're going to do scale after that. For this scale input, we should use default values of 111 rather than 000 to save a headache for us down the line. Now that's all of our inputs that we'll be using here. Like the first one, it's all gonna be based on the curve. So we're gonna duplicate the curve here. Set the resolution to 75 for both of them. We're gonna join them. Whoop. We're going to fill it. Right now, that's what we're gonna leave it. <clears throat> now let's just work with, oh, and then the output. On the output, we're gonna use, I'll show you on later, but we're gonna carry through. Some information here. The size here, we're gonna add. Thank you. 
spell that right. Okay, sorry about all that. Uh, let me connect this up to here. So, <clears throat> like normal, we got our whatever we do inside this node group, we want to output the main geometry of what we're creating there. So it's going to top geometry size here. Next, we want to output the base size and the, ge and the base geometry. Uh, this will be used later on in order to daisy change things off of each other. The base size is going to be the outside diameter of the new things we created here. So we took the base size and we're adding the outside diameter to that, springing that over and then we're going to kick that out. And then we're going to do the same since this is going to be the outside curve. We're tossing out that base geometry on the other side there too. So, so now let's start creating this thing. Our outside diameter is going to be the outside plus the current. Whoops, here's another mistake. Uh, the subtract node being added right here actually should be an addition node. Uh, it's a mistake that's picked up later in the tutorial, but I figure I'll give you an early heads up now. Multiply and subtract. So we want to take our base size, multiply that. By the ID size, and then subtract, nope, and subtract that from there, and this to there, and this one is wrong, sorry. So in order to accommodate, oh, in order to create the ID ring on that, we gotta take the base OD from our original ring here, the main ring. We wanna add the OD of what we want this one to be, which we'll control later, uh, and then do the math through those. And now I'm gonna tab out. The naming of this was all pretty much strategic because it's gonna carry over later when we use it for the main inputs of the geometry node itself. Uh, this isn't finished, but I'm gonna tab out right now so we get a little bit of control here to see what's going on. We're gonna take the main geometry out of this and join it in. So now we see we got our ring just is visible. I'm gonna take this group and duplicate it. In this input group here, I'm going to add a new node. This is just going to be um, a label. So, I'm going to call it name. And we're going to set it to a text string. So, if you want, after we get a whole bunch of groups over here, it just makes it a little bit easier. You can just name this whatever you want. Uh, Outer segments one. That right here, what I just typed in there is just a label as a visualization for the right hand side right here. It has no bearing on any of the geometry itself. All right. So what we're gonna do is take the material, bring it to the material, the extrude, bring it to extrude, the count, and bring it to the count, which I forgot about. Oh, sorry. I made a mistake with all that. I'm gonna backtrack. Now we gotta set up, excuse me. All these inputs right here are the original inputs that we're using up top. We gotta to create new ones. I messed up with that. So, we're gonna take the material as a new material. So that's what I was saying about the labeling of all this. It all, the names on the group nodes that you created, the input of the group nodes will carry over to the input of the group geometry. So now we just got to go down through here and connect everything in. And as you see over on the right hand side here, it's creating the names based on what we have. So the next one's going to be ID size and it'll create an ID size over here. So we don't have to relabel everything. Take note that this scale is going to be zero over there. It's going to create an addition to us. So that is that. All right, 
Now in order to have our second ring right here, second full ring right here, be based off of all the information, have it based off the first ring right here, we have to carry the OD, our original OD size right here, and bring it to the base size of our second group. As you can see that we just made it to the same size right here. And we want to take the geometry of our first outer ring and plug that into here. Now we will have control. So the outside here. So there's our second ring. And if we move the OD thickness or the OD of our first ring, everything works in conjunction with each other. So now we're going to jump back into the node group here and do a bit more work here. So right now we just got the main inner ring, which is just a full ring, the second inner or the second ring right here, which is a ring which we don't want. We want to break that up into segments. So that's what we're going to do through this section right here. Uh, first thing we have to do is resample so we have some points here in order to work off of. So, we're going to resample based off of the main geometry that we stuffed into there. The count of it is going to get pulled over to the count right here. We'll just change this count over here to three, uh, even though it's not ready right now. So we got a resampling right here. Next we got to do is to break it up, break this ring up into segments. For that, we're going to use a delete geometry, a mapping range, and a granite. So all that will go into after the fill curve. Uh, we'll add a delete geometry right here. Get this up out of the way. I'll try to consolidate this as much as possible, but still keeping the lines somewhat viewable here. There's our join, there's our fill, there's our delete geometry. All right, so for deleting a geometry, we gotta figure out what sections it's gonna be, which is where we're gonna use the uh, mapping range. All right. Map range. Oh, we don't wanna clamp it. For the minimum value, or for the value of it, we're going to use the length input that we had going on over here. Oh, I'm sorry. For the minimum, we're going to use the length over here. And for this value of it, we're going to use a gradient texture. And the gradient texture, as you see, we just chopped away some stuff right here. And for the gradient texture, we want to change the linear to radial. And we can leave these values as they are. All right. Next we want to do is Take our geometry right here, even though we can't see anything because it's deleted out of here. Uh, let's take our geometry here. Uh, let's well, let me toss up the length here. So you can see a little bit here. Uh, even though we have it set for three points on a remapping curve here, a uh, resampling curve here, uh, we got to put this on instance on points here. So what we'll do is. Instance on points. Uh, prior to this, we want to set oh, the position of it, which we're going to use in a little bit. For our instance.
instance here. And I guess we can connect the points. Come on. And we might as well add in the material also. So there's our material. There. We'll bring out our material over here to the material. As the material. happened there? Oh, texture. That needed to be material. I'm going to backtrack because I screwed up with that. Originally when we set up all the outputs here, I set the material input for this group as a texture and it should have been set as a material, which you just see me change. I'm going to tab out of this, back into the main one, to the main output, and we also have to change it there too. further down here. From texture to material. Now we can pick green. All right. I'm going to tab back into our group where we just were. Sorry about all that. Uh, so where did we leave off? We just put the, as we see, go from the top view right down here. We have our count, which we can add more or less here, but the orientation of the count is all screwed up. It's going to need to go around, obviously around the circumference of our first original circle here. So we got to do a little bit of math magic with this. Uh, first thing we're going to do is for the rotation here of the instances, rotation. second here. We got to use the angle you are whatever the hell that word is vector. But why can't I find it? Uh, here. Oh, here we go. I use this as a rotation. And then for the vector of this when you use the curve tangent. And now we got that. You're going to have to toy around with these. We're just going to leave it on X for right now. Uh, and now we need to set the position. Offset here. We're going to use a combined Z because we just want to play with the X on that, I believe. Vector. I use a math node here. Multiply. And we want to do this based on the base size. Uh, negative one. So scale count, whoop, our scale count down. Let's go to three. And now we're gonna bring our diameter of this all down. And things aren't working. All right, what did I do here? Okay, I just went back and played around trying to figure out what I did wrong here. And it's the access that we're doing this uh, angle vector thing. If we change it right now, as I left it on X, if we change it to Y, now everything corresponds as it should. So if we go over to the right and we change the OD, change the ID of it, and we're golden again. Okay, so now Last couple things we got to do here is in the end, if we start having multiple ones of these things, which I'll show you in a second, we want to control <clears throat> the rotation of it two different th two different ways. Uh, 
We're gonna add a transform node here. First we'll go into the transform. And oh, we want to do an extrude also. Extrude the mesh. So we're going to take this offset of the extrude, bring that over here to the extrude that we have. Which that should now be working. Add the extrude here. We also got to do a realize instances right here at the end. Uh, and we want to control the rotation of it and all this jive, which is just the main stuff. I'm just bringing this over to make it a little bit easier to see. So, we don't want to deal with the offset yet. We're going to do location, rotation, and scale. So. Rotation, rotation, and scale. So our scale was at zero. And we gotta jump that, bring that all back to one. And what I just did over there is I just clicked, left clicked on the first value while the left mouse button was down. I drug down and it'll let me highlight them all. And then you can just type in whatever you want after that. And it'll put them all, all three. And if we play with the rotation on it, now we got rotation and then you can keyframe or add modifiers and do whatever you want with all that over there. Uh, but I want to do one more thing, bring this back over to here. We need to add an offset for the rotation in case you have multiple, um, end up having multiple segments up here. Let's say you had a segment of, I don't know, six and you wanted it different sizes to be offset a little bit from this one and the rotation side of it. you wanted to start there or something like that we need to add that as an offset and that's got to go before the set position uh, try that again we're gonna set material so we're gonna do a transform we're gonna add that transform before it picks the material up, and then the rotation of that is going to the offset rotation. So essentially we've got two, two different rotations here, the offset and the other one. Uh, right now we'll say it starts right there, and that's where you want your start position, and then on the lower rotation down here we can do hash, frame, hook a driver up to it, and it goes crazy. Okay, so this right here is all complete for this second set of rings right here. And now, pretty much the easy part. I'm gonna tab back out of this. I'm gonna take this group, I'm gonna call it segments. Segments, no, we're gonna call it block segments block segments and we're just going to leave that as is bring this over a little bit <clears throat> we're going to take that section click onto it shift d make a duplicate of it we're going to run the base size from this one into the base size of the new one the base geometry of the first one to the base geometry of the second one output geometry we're going to join it into the other thing and the main input group right here we're going to duplicate that and bring it uh, bring it over here make it easier and just start carrying everything over uh, I should have added one more onto this uh, okay on this input group right here we are going to add one more to the wrong spot sorry about that we're gonna add one more block here this is just that labeling again and, and then we can cut put whatever we want here uh, 
second box. Now we start carrying over it as new inputs after this. So we're gonna go material, extrude, count, OD size. Try this again. OD size. ID size. The length. If by chance anybody knows an easier way of doing this, maybe like clicking on this and having them all added over there, that would be great. The offset rotation. The main, lo main location of it. Rotation. And scale. So now we just set up a second ring, but we can't see it because all the values over here are zero. We got our first outer ring right here. Oh. We scroll down we got our second set of blocks we'll add a material to that this one will be red the count on that let's go with eight yeah we'll go with four four with a length here an id size and it's not displaying why is it not displaying what did we do wrong here? What did I do wrong here? Let me figure this out. <laughs> All right, well, trying to figure out why we couldn't see anything right here, it was the same issue as we had the first time. It was the scaling. So if we go down here, highlight all the scaling for it, change it to one, here we go. The extrude, we're just gonna knock that back down to one, or to zero, and the segment length is a bit big. There we go, and we'll take the top down view. So, so what I was saying earlier about the rotation of the two, damn it, the rotation of the two is we're gonna bring this down some, we'll say to there, and how right now with the rotation of everything is at zero right now, this is what we wanna do, let me bring the timeline up here. beginning frame right here uh, we're just gonna make these both spin so for the full-blown rotation on the z-axis we're gonna do a, a frame and we're just gonna divide it by a hunter control copy that we'll come down here oh nope, that didn't work we're gonna do a frame divided by 100 and if we play it I put that in the scale, not the frame, or not the rotation. Backtrack. The frame. Frame divided by 100. There we go. So right now how we play it, they're both spinning in conjunction with each other, which is what we want. But we want to offset that. We want the pink one to be pretty much straddling both sides of that. So if we go down to the offset rotation, It's not working. All right, let me see what we did with that. What I did with that. I like the Wii thing here. It makes me feel a little bit less uh, of the issue. <laughs> okay, the issue with that was if we click into, and both of these groups are mirrors of each other. So if you click into this group right here, tab into it and edit something, edit anything in here, I'm gonna tab back out. Those edits will carry over into the second group. So if you edit either one of them, unless you create a new you know, a new group out of it. Uh, so we go back into there, but what we did is added the transform. What I did was added the transform, but never hooked it up. So we go from the rotation here 
to the offset rotation. We'll cut, click back out of that, go to the beginning frame. And now if we use the offset rotation right here, well, I'll backtrack. There's at zero. If we hit play, they're both going. If we offset it by I, they're still, still traveling together, rotating together, but now you can do whatever you want with that. <clears throat> all right, so, and if you wanted to add more, that's all you could continue to do is do the same thing over. We're gonna take this group right here, duplicate it. We're gonna take, uh -huh. it's still on me right here. When, if we backtrack all the way to the original time, when we created this first group right here, when we started creating that group, I'm gonna go inside of this one. We start creating that group, we just had one node inside of there, and then we created all the inputs first. If on the input side of things, we'll go all the way to the top here, we're gonna click base, we're gonna add a new one. We're gonna change this to string, to name, We're just gonna pop it up one. Now it just saves us a little bit of a, a naming scheme later because we can come down here to the new one that we just duplicated. And as you see, we got our name right here. We're gonna duplicate this input. I'll bring it right over here to make it a little bit easier to see. And now we can just start carrying everything over for the new one. That'll uh, create our name. Oh. We don't want to do the base size or the base geometry because that gets carried over from earlier. Uh, when I do them. Material. Extrude. Ah, another thing we might want to do when we originally create this. Let me tab back inside of this. If we go down to the scale as a default, just put one all the way over there. Highlight, oops. Highlighted the three, added one. This we got changed back to zero. Uh, so now when we create, now when we carry it over, those ones will automatically be there. Uh, the OD, the ID, the length, the rotation offset, location, rotation, scale we can get this big old thing out of the way now and we want to grab the base size of the previous one hook it to the base size of the new one the base geometry of the old one hook it to the base geometry of the new one and there's our original join and we want to take the output of this pop it into there now as you see we got our name here, third block, H I R third. Third blocks. We do have our scale all the way up. We'll go with eight. No, just uh oh. Is it gonna crash? What did I do here? Eight. Sorry about that. and our length, and here we go. We're gonna go for the main rotation, do the same thing. Frame divided by 100. And we'll change, let's change the material to blue. So it looks like the inner one was carried all the way out. And here we go. So, there you see, and you can just continue to add on to that, change things, do what you want with this particular uh, group section here, but it's just pretty much a copy and paste from here on out on that. Uh, being that this tutorial right now is pretty long, just putting these blocks on there, uh, I'm gonna cut it short. Uh, this right now seems like it's a whole lot of information for you to work with, and obviously you can play around and do what you want. Um, I will create a couple more of these. Uh, the next ones we can show is how to make the pins that come out of here, which is just cylinders instead of using the curves. 
and here. We use cylinders and extrude those in different ways. Uh, I've also played around with using blocks and spheres. I can bring over another screen right here. This is the template that I was working off of. And as you see, is we got some spheres, completely round ones. We got some staggered ones or some crummy ones here. Also have some blocks here. Uh, you can add all sorts of stuff onto that. And these are all pretty much the same thing. We just create. Here's one for the pins. I'll give you a screenshot of that. Uh, this end part here is exactly the same as the previous. Oh, well, this is the same as the previous. This is the only part that's different is this section right here. I'll slowly move it around here so if you wanted to you can follow the strings of what everything is. But this right here will create the cylinders which is the pins coming out of there. You can see the inputs off to the left. I'll tab back out of here. If we wanted to do a ball, uh, balls are a little bit more. I'll do a tutorial on that. I mean, here's the node group for it, but for the balls, it's pretty much basically the same thing as the cylinders. But later on, in order for the output geometry, in order to base have the daisy chain to work after that, you just got to work with the circumference of it or the diameter of it and the radius of it. Uh, I'll do a tutorial on that. But let me tie back out of here. Get rid of this. But that's what you got right here. Uh, can do one more thing here is. Uh, do a couple of these things so you can actually see us control a couple things here. So I'm just going to add a plane. We'll move it over to here for that plane. We added a new geometry nodes. And now we can just start controlling this thing. We'll go with three segments here change the color to green oh here's that scaling thing again definitely got to make that scaling a default uh, go down there and change all these while I'm at it oh that's already there Actually, it would be best <clears throat> when we create the groups here is to create defaults for all of them. Maybe jump up the length a little bit on it, uh, the count on it. But anyway, so. There we go. That's that material for that one. Here's the second one. We'll go with red. The third one. We'll go with a count of six bigger and change rotation a little bit I don't want to change that change the rotation a little bit something like that another one go look blue mouse will go a bit on that. I 
anyway. I'm sorry, you see, you get the point, so. And I'm gonna have to call that a day because I'm kind of tired. And as you see with all the edits, I kind of bumbled my way through. It was a bad day to do a tutorial, but I did want to get one out because I said I was going to. So hopefully this was informative to you and, ooh, excuse me, you find some use out of it. Any tips like normal, tips that you have for me, anything you can offer, different ways of doing things, better ways of doing things, uh, more efficient, blah, 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 blah. Please post them below and uh, take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.